everybody, Wave 3 News meteorologists Ryan Hoke here with a Saturday night update to your Hokey video blog. We're talking snow and a wintry mix as we go throughout the overnight hours. Let's get you right to the Doppler radar view. You'll see that we've got some radar returns coming in from Bedford over toward North Vernon. Most of this isn't reaching the ground at this point, though. We've got some dry air in the lower atmosphere we're trying to saturate and overcome for this snow to make it to the ground. Pretty big slug of snow off to the west, though. A lot of this is going to be aiming itself up toward I-70, the Indianapolis corridor in central Indiana, and out to the west you'll see even more snow. But something we're watching is that the freezing rain and the sleet line is moving farther and farther north across portions of Missouri. That's going to do the same thing in Kentucky as we head throughout tonight. And in fact, I think Metro Louisville, in terms of snow, it's just not going to be a whole lot. I think Lawrence, Jackson, and Jennings will cash in on the snow totals while the rest of us see a little bit of snow, a little bit of freezing rain, maybe just a brief period of sleet. Nothing to really be of much concern. Certainly watch for some slick roads and some slick spots overnight, but I think the main issues are going to be to the north of Metro Louisville. That's where the winter weather advisory is as we go throughout the overnight. It goes until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All of southern Indiana covered, and it also includes Trimble and Carroll counties here in Kentucky. Temperatures below freezing from Paoli to Austin, North Vernon, Bedford at this time, Cordon even at the freezing mark. The rest of us, close to or just above freezing. 34 in both Louisville and Fort Knox as of the last hourly observation at 8 o'clock this evening. Futurecast puts a slug of snow in here by 10 o'clock. Looks like a pretty good bet based on the radar off to our west. Notice how those temperatures they really fall into the 20s across portions of southern Indiana. That's pretty much the trend we're seeing now. That evaporative cooling will help to dip those temperatures down a degree or two as the atmosphere saturates, certainly. But this batch of snow, as we go throughout 10 o'clock here on Futurecast, Cast, kind of pushes north. Notice how I-70 gets that snow. Northern portions of Lawrence, Jackson, Jennings County still remain snow, though, as a period of wintry mix begins to creep northward. This is as that area of warm air aloft begins to move northward from the Ohio River, basically uh, up toward portions of Lawrence, Jackson, and Jennings counties. This is what's going to cause that light amount of icing as we go throughout the overnight hours. It's going to be light because it's going to be very brief. The rain Ah, thank goodness, rain, right? It's going to be moving in as we head toward, I'd say, 4, 5 a.m., beyond. And by that point, I think we'll be just about all rain across our counties, except for the northern portions of Lawrence, Jackson, and Jennings. You guys may still be snow, even as we head toward the time frame on Sunday morning when a lot of folks are heading out to Sunday services. The rest of us, though, temperature's too warm for snow, and we're just playing rain with travel issues becoming better. Any slick spots we'll have seen during the overnight uh, will be ameliorated as we move throughout mid to late Sunday morning, even the early portion of Sunday morning. I think here at Louisville and Point South where it shouldn't be a real big deal. Futurecast points out a break in the rain and the snow. Uh, some other models not so sure about that. More of a consistent waves of rain and snow thing as we go throughout the day. But the snow would be just, again, the very northern portions of Lawrence, Jackson, and Jennings. And temperatures warm so much that it probably wouldn't stick. And a lot of it would be in a melting mode as we go throughout the afternoon, the early evening. It may switch back to a little bit of snow for a lot of us across southern Indiana and the north central portion of Kentucky as we go throughout Sunday night. But only for a very brief moment as the cold air comes crashing in behind this system. You'll see there temperatures around the freezing mark at 8.30 on your Sunday there from Bedford down to Salem. That snow not looking impressive at all. Maybe just a few flurries at best, up to a dusting in a couple of places, but really compared to tonight, tomorrow night's not going to be a big deal at all. Here's the latest snowfall map I've put together. Basically one to two inches from Jasper to Madison and northward. Not a whole lot of changes here. The data's been pretty consistent. The radar trends are lining up somewhat with that. If I had to do anything, I would probably tighten up the up to one inch gradient to be just a little farther north of Louisville, but we'll keep it where it is just because some of the radar trends I've noticed out to the west uh, keep that snow band coming right up the Ohio River. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it, certainly, as we go throughout uh, the next several hours. We'll have an update on Wave 3 News at 11 as well. So, really, compared to the last couple of events we've had around here with snow 
and the potential for some wintry mix. This is not that big of a deal. Just watch for your travel plans overnight if you've got any. If you've got to be out in southern Indiana, you could encounter those snow-covered roads, and they could be slick in some places as well with that very light coating of ice. The RPM model pretty much spot on with our accumulation forecast. One inch from Jasper, again over to North Vernon and northward as well. It's got Seymour at 5.1 inches, but I think the data point for Seymour is actually just a little bit north of Jackson County that we've got plotted there. So really, in Jackson County itself, that 1 to 2 inch range would be pretty good. And notice how Louisville points south. <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to be a real big deal. The NAM model, very similar. Again, watch that Seymour reading there. It's probably just a few miles north of where the actual Seymour is on that reading there. And again, Louisville, we don't get a whole lot. We're going to be watching the ice overnight as we could see that very brief burst of it, but totals will be staying under a tenth of an inch, and that shouldn't cause many problems. But with uh, the temperatures that we've had today in the mid-30s, it won't take too much for those roads to dip below freezing in southern Indiana. So anything that would fall as freezing rain, of course, would adhere to that road surface and those elevated objects especially. So we'll need to watch for some slick spots up there along with the snow-covered roads. Here's a timeline of uh, coming events during the overnight until 2 o'clock on your Sunday that's tonight. I think we will be seeing snow in southern Indiana. After that point, that's when I think that freezing rain and sleet line begins to creep northward. Some of the forecast soundings I've been looking at suggest more of a freezing rain scenario than sleet because the refreeze layer near the ground is not that big, and that's what you need to get sleet instead of that freezing rain. So by 9 o'clock on Sunday, I think most of us are going to be rain. Most of the travel issues are going to be going away by that point. Again, you northern folks in Lawrence, Jackson, and Jennings County, We'll need to watch you even through the mid to late morning on your Sunday, but I think things will be getting better regardless. You guys have seen a whole lot of snow over the last several weeks, much like the rest of us have, so buckle up. A little bit more to come. Snowy roads again in southern Indiana with that light icing, so just watch for a few slick spots out there. We also want to hit on this next system that we're tracking as we go throughout next week. Here's the latest model data for rainfall through early Wednesday. All right, I'm not tracking... Uh, the rainfall on this chart past early Wednesday at this point because some of that might be snow. We'll have to watch that. We'll show you that in the seven day coming up in just a second. GFS is at two and a half inches. Euro's at just under an inch. The models have backed off a little bit on this. They were gunning more toward like a three inch scenario uh, as we go through that time frame. But I still think that is very much on the table, very much possible as we go through time early next week. Flooding potential definitely a possibility. In fact, thunderstorms too. I think any severe weather as we go throughout your Tuesday into your Wednesday is going to be mostly confined south of our county. Some of the analogs, historic data that we look at to see what current events or forecast events may look like compared to previous ones, that data shows that most of the severe weather will be south of us, something we're certainly watching. But uh, yeah, we've got that chance of a little light mix late on Monday into early Tuesday. We'll watch that. Just very light, very brief before we all warm up in preparation for that 60 degree high temperature on your Tuesday as we go throughout that time frame. Here's what the uh, GFS looks like, by the way, for rainfall. You'll see that areas just south of the city see the very heaviest according to this run of this model. Up to three inches in Lexington, same story from Lebanon down toward uh, Campbellsville, Munfordville, and really we see 2.6 inches by Wednesday at 5 a.m. So this is going to be combining with the melting snow and then the possible additional snowfall to create some of those flooding issues that we could see as we go throughout your Tuesday and your Wednesday. Now, we also could snow, see some snow Wednesday into very early Thursday. This is another one of those waves that could ride along the front. A lot of models are still showing this. National Weather Service put out a nice note saying that a setup like this did happen back in 1995 where we went from thunderstorms and very warm temperatures to a little thumping of accumulating snow just uh, shortly thereafter, within 24 hours. Could this be that scenario? We'll certainly see. I think it's way too early to assume this is going to happen, and it's too early to pin down where exactly the heaviest snow would be if it does fall. You'll want to stay with us here on the video blogs, and of course with the Wave 3 News Storm Tracking Team, we'll have the latest on that. By Thursday, it's cold, 28 degrees, but certainly because we're heading into the month of March, these cold shots that we've been seeing, while we will still see them, they'll be not as long-lived and not as intense. Spring's coming, folks. In fact, we're only 19 days away from astronomical spring. Meteorological spring begins tomorrow on March 1st. I think we're all looking forward to it after the rough couple of weeks we've had here in late February. 
That's all for now. Catch us on Wave 3 News at 11 for an update on the radar and the forecast. And again, Andy Weingarten will be in tomorrow morning for Wave 3 News Sunrise. I'll be back here tomorrow night.